uh, thank you for being here for this. Uh, another nice session and dear and near to everyone's heart. I think uh, quality is always an important aspect of what we do. And we're uh, very honored to have the cream of quality in emergency medicine speaking to us today. Uh, I would like, the first session, I would like to introduce Dr. Abdurrahman Gahtani, who is a colleague of mine. Uh, we both, uh, I think, trained in Boston at some stage. And he's the chief medical officer of uh, the national, uh, uh, Abdurrahman? King Saud uh, University Hospital, one of the major hospitals in, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. And he will be talking to us on how to implement QI projects in the ED. And uh, Dr. Abdurrahman has uh, always been, he had multiple and different backgrounds uh, from quality, from emergency uh, department administration. He was chief of emergency department uh, uh, for many years and a uh, very experienced emergency physician. Abdurrahman, good Thank to have so you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saleh, for the introduction. So when he say we, we train in a different stage, just to let you know, he's older than me. So we did. Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Saleh. Thank you for having us here today, and uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here again, and it's a pleasure to be uh, with you and with Stephanie, uh, uh, used to be one of one uh, used to be my mentor when I was in Boston doing the administration uh, fellowship so uh, welcome everybody uh, today's very important topic it's how to implement quality improvement project in emergency department I have nothing to disclose to start with but let's start with this, with this question what is the most common quality improvement project in life can someone give a kiss? Mathematic. That's right. But what are the, 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 the most common projects? Everyone, no one has a guess. So my guess is marriage is the, the most common quality improvement project in life. So people decide to get married to improve their life, and the same rule applied to the uh, uh, quality improvement or improvement project applied to the, to the marriage with the same success rate or failure rate. It has well-defined goal. So for those who knows how to implement, implement this project or know what, what does it take to do this project, they will understand how to implement project and how much patience they should be and implementing any project in the emergency department. So, how to implement QI projects in EDs? Uh, we might use the SIPSIS as, as a reference project in any time we need to, to refer to a project, per se. So we might use the SIPSIS project as, as a reference in this. Uh. First of all, implementing quality improvement projects is a change management exercise. And as you know, changing, change management is changing the alignment of your department, changing the goals, changing things toward a different goal, a, a, a new defined goal that is aligned with the organization goal. I think Stephanie is worried I'll, I'll fall down from this. I have to step back again a little bit. The problem is that change is hard. People overestimate what they have. They overestimate, they think the status quo is much better than what what's the, what's the future should look like. They, they resist to, to change. They don't like to, to change. They think they are doing fine. That's why it's, it's hard. But we need to know change, implementing the any project or implementing quality improvement project is a change management exercise and we need to understand what change management means. This is the Cotter model or John Cotter's. He's one of the of the biggest scholar uh, from Harvard on, on change management. And that is his eight steps change management model. And it's talk about how to introduce change into an organization or into any, any, uh, any project. And it's divided into like three themes. First one is you have to create first a climate of change. And the most important thing is, is the creating urgency you have to create agency that we need to make the change. 
before in order to get buying from everyone, whether the leadership or your team or whoever. The second is engagement, which is very important. You need to engage people into your uh, project, into your change management exercise. The third one is how to make it stick. It's about sustainability, about maintaining the project, which is the, the, the last and the most difficult part of any project. Because as you know, more than 50% of the projects do not last more than one year. They just fall down after one year. So you have to consider sustainability from the first day you design a project or you, try, or you want to do design, uh, implement any project. So how to do to implement? What is the first thing to do? First thing to do is you have to choose the right project. And what's the right project for you? Right project should be patient-centered should be relevant, and when we say relevant, should be relevant to your hospital, relevant to your department. So for example, if your hospital, they don't see trauma patients, you don't have to spend time studying one or two trauma patients coming to your hospital uh, a month or, uh, or uh, a year. You have to study something relevant to your hospital. Number two, the goal has to be aligned, or you, you, your project has to be aligned with the organization objectives. So when you define your project, when you choose your project, you have to make sure the objective of your project or the outcome of your project is aligned with the overall or the hospital-wide uh, objectives and strategy. It has to be impactful. It has to add value to the patients, add value to the organization, and so on. And the most important part it has to have a clear aim. You have to define what's the aim of your project. What are you trying to achieve? And whether this achievement or that change is improvement or no. So we cannot just say, we need to improve the care of diabetic patients in ED. That's a good aim, but it's not, it's not, it's the, it's not the right one. You need to be specific about your, your goal. Number two is the right data. And this is very crucial. You have to choose the right data from the beginning. From the design, you have to know what data you need to collect, what's your baseline. Most of the projects, they need to go back and do recollect some information because they did not do the, the planning right. So, and sometimes that is, is a labor intensive. It's hard to ask someone to go again and collect, do the chart review or do the audit again. It's, it's not an easy task. So you have to be careful to know what data you need to collect from the beginning. You need to collect the baseline, collect the right data, and don't collect unnecessary data. It's not about just collect. I can guarantee you, every one of you has thousands of data sitting in their department. Nobody looked at it for years. So you don't have to waste your time and waste the time of your staff to do that. The other thing is the IT. You should have an a decent IT system to, to, uh, to achieve the big project. For a small project, it's okay. I always hear this excuse from, from colleague or from, we don't have IT system. I mean, how can we do a quality improvement project? It's not necessarily to have IT system. You can do hundreds of projects without, uh, without IT system. And sometimes some of the good projects comes out of the paper-based uh, paper projects. For example, sepsis in Wales, they are achieving good results in sepsis care, and they are a paper-based uh, system. They don't have IT system. This is it, the right team. You have to choose the right team for your project. So the team is, is the one who can take over the, the, the project and make it, make it, uh, uh, make it happen, make, make a result out of it. You have to be honest with yourself when you choose your team. So you, do, you, you don't just choose your friend for the project. You choose people who can add value to that project. So when you go back to, to the sepsis project, you choose the one who has the experience, who have the knowledge, who has the commitment, 
to achieve this project because it's very important project, for example. So, and don't feel bad or don't feel shy to fire a team member, especially if you are a manager of emergency department or a team member, if, if he is not contributing to the, uh, to the project. After you coach him, uh, try to teach him how to help if, if, if you think he is he's becoming obstacle to the, to the project, you can just ask him to, to leave the team. And that's the key, is, 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 the, is the team, uh, your team is the key to the, uh, uh, to the success of any project. One more thing, usually in the ADs, we think we can do everything by ourselves, and it's in every department, that's the AD. If you go to the cardiology, you find them planning, for example, acute coronary syndrome pathway or project in MI or something, without involving the ID, the AD department. The same happened with the AD. They want to do something, for example, in sepsis, let's go back to the sepsis, and they might not involve the, the, the other stakeholder or the other people involved in the project. So patient does not know which department he's coming to. It's, it's, he coming to the hospital. He doesn't know this departmentation or segmentation of the, of the section. So you need to involve everyone involved in your, in your exercise. And that's what we call sometimes the stakeholder analysis. You have to do the stakeholder exercise very well. It's one of the important tools you need to do for any projects. And the stakeholders are everyone, almost everyone. Anyone who is affected or can affect a project should be considered into your, uh, uh, into your stakeholder analysis. So uh, uh, from... Uh, Physician, if you take the, the uh, for example, the sepsis, physician, the ED physician, the ICU physician, the internists, the, uh, the sepsis projects we started, we forgot to invite the, the uh, antibiotics stewardship or the ID people with us. We discovered that after we start the uh, kicking off the project because we, we, we failed to do the, ex the, the stakeholder uh, analysis very well. So this is one of the most important steps in planning the project, is to do an extensive and effective stakeholder analysis, and not to miss anyone. And everyone will be treated different way. Some people need just to be informed. There is a, there is a project going on in case we need money. So for example, the financial officer, he needs to know there is some project going on. So when they plan the budget or something, he will consider you uh, in his, um, uh, planning for the budget, for, the, for example, for next year. So he needs to be informed. Some people need to be oriented only. And some need to be on top of everything. Always pilot, start small, do the BDSA. Sure, you know this better than, than me. So you just plan, study, and act once and twice and start the pilots small before you roll out. You didn't roll out the project, the whole project uh, from the first time. You have to do uh, uh, some piloting. You can follow the, uh, the model of improvement, which is the BDSA, which plan, do, study again, then act. There are some ED considerations since this is a, an emergency medicine conference. We have to do some, uh, add one slide in the ED consideration, which is, for example, we have to consider the short stay, shorter stay of the patient in the ED. Some, some hospital uh, patients didn't stay for long, so you cannot apply the project uh, completely in ED patients. So for example, if you study the six hours bundle of the sepsis or the three hours bundle, and the patient has to leave the AD within two hours. I hear Abu Dhabi, they have two hours rule now in some of their hospital. If I'm not mistaken, patient should not stay more than two hours. So, so the, 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 the project has to be planned very well if you want to start it from the AD. The six hours also, and so on. Patients are undifferentiated in AD, so they, you don't have the luxury, for example, like a cardiology if you want to do a project on acute STEMI. They come in the morning, they know they have like two patients to me every day, 
they take their time, they have the full day or three days, they collect whatever they want. So we have to keep in mind this, to consider this when you plan the project. Last thing is the culture. It's your role as a manager of the department to, to change the culture of the, of, the, of the department or the organization. You have to have, as, it, as they said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you need to make sure people have a culture of improvement. They want to do improvement. They need to understand the status quo is dangerous sometimes to them. It's not healthy to stay just, we are doing fine. They need to change. They need to make improvement in their department. And you have to encourage the culture of feedback, which is very important. Everyone has to uh, be able to give feedback about the project, feedback about the, the current situation. That will make, you, it, it will make it easier for you to identify the, uh, uh, the gaps in the system, identify future projects, identify if there is any failure in implementing your, 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 uh, your current project. So last thing is uh, quality improvement project or implementing quality project is a change management exercise. We have, we have to know what's the change, what it takes to, to know and the change management in and out. The other thing is the stakeholder engagement is very crucial and important in any project. We have to consider it in all projects and we have to do it very effectively. Last thing is you have to try small, start small, then you scale up based on the learning you learn from the, uh, from the first project. And that's it. Thank you so much.